Missiles, drones, shells and tanks. Russia is facing serious production difficulties. The military-industrial complex of the Russian Federation is not capable of producing such a quantity of weapons that would allow the occupiers to seize Ukrainian territories. However, Moscow took up the task of cleaning out tank and ammunition depots. Welt publication writes about this. As for drones, Russia is increasing production of Shahed 136 attack drones. At the same time, Moscow cannot increase missile production volumes due to the presence of Western components there. If we take a closer look at the four key areas of arms, the situation is much less rosy and at the same time, far from the hopes of the Ukrainians and their Western partners, the publication writes. According to Oryx portal analysts, the Russian army has already lost 8,400 armored vehicles in Ukraine. This number includes 2.9 thousand tanks and 5.5 thousand armored personnel carriers. In total, before the full-scale invasion, the Russians had about 10,000 units of this type. As of the beginning of 2024, it became known from satellite images that the Russian Federation has another 40% of tanks at its training grounds. They will be restored and sent to the front in Ukraine. The pace is estimated at up to 1,600 units per year. Also, the Russians can produce up to 200 armored vehicles per year. According to calculations by Johann Michel and Michael Gerstad, from the British International Institute for Strategic Studies, stocks of old equipment in the Russian Federation will decrease to zero within two to three years. The main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine stated that the Russian Federation can produce about 230 units of certain types of missiles per month. 130 of them have a range of more than 350 kilometers, another 100 have a shorter range. Recently, the Russian Minister of Industry stated that in 2025, the Russian Federation intends to produce 5,000 attack drones of the Shahed-136 type. Their occupiers use them daily to attack Ukrainian cities. At the same time, the overall target for drone production that year is 11,000 units. On average, in 2023, the Russians released eight drones per day across Ukraine. In 2024, Russian industry is capable of producing 2.1 million shells. Welt notes that Moscow can also count on Soviet reserves as well as supplies from its partners. The main suppliers are Belarus and North Korea. Russia wants to turn Ukrainian Kharkiv into uninhabitable grey zone. British media outlet The Economist, with reference to military sources in Kyiv, assumes that Russia decided to turn the city of Kharkiv into a grey zone uninhabitable for civilians. The Economist, in the story titled The Kremlin Wants to Make Ukraine's Second City Unlivable, the escalation had military sources in Kyiv suggesting that Russia has resolved to make the city a grey zone uninhabitable for civilians. Meanwhile, Ihor Terekov, mayor of Kharkiv, strongly refuted this hypothesis. In an interview conducted at a secret location in the industrial quarter, Terekov says residents of his city have no intention of giving up. Things were worse at the start of the war, he argues, when all but 300,000 of the city's pre-war population of 2 million people fled. How can you make a city like this a grey zone? People won't leave because they have already left, then returned. They have been tortured enough already. Terekov stated that it was quite challenging to power the city up without power stations or working transformers, but they have managed to do it. If I told you how we did it, that too would be targeted, he added. The Economist notes that many of Kharkiv's problems would be solved if the West provided more air defense systems or F-16 fighter jets that could push back the Russian fighter jets carrying the gliding bombs. It adds that Russia destroyed some of the Western-supplied Patriot air defense units that Ukraine had been using to protect cities like Kharkiv. Russia's exact intentions are not clear at this stage, though there are certain signs that it is preparing for a major summer offensive. A Ukrainian source with knowledge of the intelligence picture said Russia is currently training six divisions, approximately 120,000 troops in eastern Siberia, the article says. The Economist believes that Kharkiv is one of several possible directions for a future assault. It is not the most likely, but it has already been heavily trailed in Russian media. That might indicate a Kremlin information campaign to frighten Kharkiv residents. Or it could be a nod in the direction of a pro-war camp agitating for a fiercer response to Ukraine's frequent attacks on Belgorod, which are also causing unease in Western circles. The material says, The Economist admits that the military operation of invading Kharkiv 
would be an exceptionally complicated mission for Russia. Taking the city would require breaking through Ukrainian defenses and encircling it, which Russia is nowhere near being able to do. Establishing air superiority, which is not a given, and winning a bloody urban campaign, The Economist explains.